There are people who want to limit the amount of driving we do, including most notably Ray LaHood, our Secretary of Transportation. Now you would think the Secretary of Transportation would be in favor of transportation, but instead he says it is his goal to coerce people out of their automobiles. Now when Bush was president, the uh, Secretary of Transportation introduced a couple of interesting rules that said if you're going to build rail transit, you have to show that it's cost effective. And suddenly the number of applications being approved for rail transit plummeted because they weren't cost effective. Now they were very weak, it was a very weak test of cost effectiveness, but it killed some projects. And so Ray LaHood in his infinite wisdom has rescinded those rules because in his mind it doesn't matter how much money you waste, what counts is livability. What is livability? No, it's, it's, Seems like you, you hear words like this all the time that sound so good, but really are so meaningless. Uh, but they are full of meaning if you know what the speaker means when they say livability. Ray LaHood thinks my home state of Oregon is livable. Let me show you what that means. In Oregon, 97% of the state has been zoned rural. And you cannot build a house on your own land in this zone unless you own at least 80 acres you actually farm it and you actually earn forty to eighty thousand dollars a year farming it depending on the soil productivity less than one out of six Oregon farmers have earned that much money so if they didn't already have houses on their land they couldn't build them and they the planners are proud to say that only 100 building permits per year have been issued in rural areas since these rules are impl implemented in 1993 <coughs> now the House Transportation Committee wants to write a bill, has written a bill that they want Congress to pass next year that requires every state in the country to create rural planning organizations to impose these <coughs> kind, same kind of rules throughout the United States. Meanwhile, in order to promote livability, Portland has rezoned neighborhoods of single-family homes for apartments. So if your neighbor has a, uh, a rental property, and they've got a big backyard, they can put an apartment in the backyard. The zoning is so strict that if your house burns down, you're not allowed to rebuild it. You have to build an apartment. So they get a rapid transformation of neighborhoods from single family to multifamily, and they get a shrinkage in the supply of single family homes. Now, survey after survey shows that 80% of Americans want to live in single family homes with a yard. And, uh, in places where you don't have government regulation, you can get a house like this. It's a four bedroom, two and a half bath, 2,200 square foot home on a quarter acre lot for about $150,000. This is actually a house in Houston. It sold for $150,000 uh, a couple of years ago. And according to Caldwell Banker, that's about what it would sell for today. In cities that have livability, uh, the price is more like $300,000 to $1.5 million. Uh, in Boulder, for example, that same house would go for $620,000 because Boulder is so much more livable than other cities. <laughs> and, uh, if you watch the Olympics, you may have heard someone say that Vancouver is a very livable city. It's the most livable city in the world. We know that because it has the least affordable housing. That house would cost about a million and a half dollars in Vancouver, BC. Uh, also in Santa Barbara and San Jose and places like that. Uh, another meaning of the word livability is more traffic congestion because to be more livable they're not going to build any more roads because people will just drive on them and we don't want to build things that people will use we want to build light rail lines that people don't use so they're not going to build more roads we're so going to have a lot more traffic congestion and uh, livability means stealing money from fire and police and schools and other essential urban services and giving it to developers. They call it tax increment financing. Stapleton, for example, received $300 million in tax increment financing, which means all the school children in Stapleton are being educated at your expense, whereas the taxes that their parents pay go to subsidize the development and none of the taxes that they pay go to subset, well, very little of the taxes go to the schools that their students are going, their kids are going to. That means you have to accept either lower quality schools or pay higher taxes to make up for the fact that they've stolen all this money away. 
Livability means expensive transportation. The New York City transit system is the most efficient transit system in the country, and yet fares cover only two-thirds of the operating costs and none of the capital costs. RTD fares only cover, what, 25% of the operating costs and none of the capital costs. So uh, if you drive, it costs you about 23 cents a passenger mile to drive, and then all those horrible highway subsidies add up to a penny a passenger mile. If you take New York City Transit, the most efficient transit system in the country, you pay about 24 cents a passenger mile, and then there's another 65 cents that are subsidized. And the average is even more. Denver is worse than the average. Uh, if you want to go intercity, Amtrak is about 25 cents a passenger mile subsidies. So huge subsidies are going to other forms of transportation, uh, intercity, rail, and, and urban transit, uh, and the subsidies to driving are very small. That means if you want to have everybody ride transit, you're going to expect to pay three to four times the cost for transportation. Right now we pay about 10% of our incomes for transportation. That would mean if you want to be as mobile as you are today, you can expect to pay 30 to 40% of your income on transportation. You're not going to do that, so you're going to be a lot less mobile, which means you're going to be poorer, you're going to have less access to low quality consumer, low cost consumer goods, and so on and so forth. More people are going to be stuck in high density housing, and so on. But don't we need to do all this to get to clean up the environment, to save energy, to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, and, and stop the greenhouse uh, uh, gases from causing global warming? Well, it turns out cars are getting more and more energy efficient every year, Transit, because we insist on building these light rail lines in the places where nobody uses them, is getting less and less energy efficient every year. Denver light rail line uses more energy and emits more greenhouse gases than an average SUV, much less a regular passenger car. Plus, cars are expected to get even more energy efficient. By 2025, the average automobile on the road, including both cars and SUVs and pickups, will be more energy efficient than the most efficient trans transit system in the country and more energy efficient than any high-speed rail line. So as a result, these collective forms of transportation are going to be the brown transportation and automobiles will be the green transportation. But that doesn't matter to the House Transportation Committee which wants to define by law that transit and bicycling and walking is sustainable and cars are not sustainable. That's going to be the definition by law, so there won't be more arguments about it. Now the advocates of, of uh, these policies say they just want to give you choices, more housing choices, for example, like Belmar, uh, the development over in Lakewood. Uh, but what they really mean is, is they want to deny you the choice of living in a single family home and force more and more people to live in, uh, in apartments and condos. They say they want to give you transportation choices like buses and light rail, but they want to deny you the choice of driving on an uncongested road. Now, what's really amazing is that they tell you they want the United States to be more like Europe. Those Europeans are so smart and they're so green and so on. Well, we drive for 85% of our travel. Europeans drive for 79% of their travel. Not a big difference. And, and this freeway is in France. It was built as a public-private partnership. A private company built it. They toll it. And after 40 years, they're going to be, it's going to be fully paid for, and they'll give it to the government. It'll be, then become a public road, which might be free or it might be tolled, depending on what the government wants to do with it. Uh, they're building roads like that all over Europe uh, very rapidly. They're building roads like that all over China. And we're the ones who are falling behind. Then they say they want to build high-speed rail. Well, the problem with high-speed rail is that it's really, really, really expensive. Uh, <clears throat> for example, I was in New York City recently, and I had to get to Washington, D.C. So I looked up on the Internet, and to take Amtrak's 130-mile-an-hour train from New York to Washington, D.C., and that's the top speed, the average speed is only 85 miles an hour, it would cost $155. Then I looked up, Megabus. Megabus is an English company that's starting to offer bus services in the Midwest and Northeast. They have a bus service from New York to Washington. If you buy your ticket early enough, it's one dollar. 